Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola here at Jazz at Lincoln Center here in New York City. Tonight you're going to witness a milestone. Tonight drummer Ralph Peterson is celebrating his 50th birthday and at 50 he just released a brand new CD called The Duality Perspective which combines both his fotet, which is his quartet, with his sextet. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about the brand new CD. We're going to talk about his role as an educator at Berkeley, as well as reflect on how he learned and mastered the drums. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Ralph Peterson live here at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola here at Jazz at Lincoln Center here in New York City. perspective. This is really an amalgamation of the sextet and the fotet. Absolutely. Showing both sides or two sides of Ralph Peterson. Well, you've been doing both amalgamations for quite a while, but this one has all new pro these new compositions, all of them. And this one you've got the uh the the brothers on here that are helping you out. Well, absolutely. Uh you know, the Fotet and the Sextet have never appeared on the same record before. So it was the first time for that. And, uh, you know, having the Curtis Brothers and Sean Jones and Walter Smith and uh, Eddie Bayard, these guys are guys that are at the top of their game, young cats that are at the top of their game now, who, ironically enough, 10 years ago were as unknown as the names of the new Fotet members are now. So that's why on the CD cover, the leaves on the sextet side of the tree are fully developed. And on the, on the Fotet side of the tree, they're buds, you know, with the same potential, but haven't really sprung into complete. I was, you know, the artist Edward LaRose, it's a bad album cover, ain't it? <laughs> it's a bad album cover. I mean, it's the kind of thing you put in your house and just sit and look at. You don't even, not because, you know. And so it really is an accurate statement about where I am right now and how I got here. You know, the roots coming up from Art Blakey and Michael Carvin and Elvin Jones and Walter Davis and Bill Fielder. And Paul Jeffrey. That I mean, I could have had more roots, you know what I mean? But I wanted to pay homage to those cats. And then, as the last messenger drummer, I want this record to be a clear statement that I'm living the messenger legacy in more than one band, you know? 
it was true in outer reaches, and it's even you know doubly true in the duality perspective. You know, you had another milestone. You just turned fifty. Congratulations! Thank you. And you're an educator now, and I noticed that you know what you just said. You know, from the Art Blakey School, and you're actually doing exactly what he's doing with the younger generation of musicians. Well, yes. And I'm doing it. God gives you lemons, you make lemonade. If there's not as many playing gigs to develop young musicians in, but you have an opportunity to teach, you're going to sit around and cry about there being no gigs, or you're going to protect the thing you love by making sure the truth is passed down the way it was passed to you. And so that's how I guard it. That's how I look at teaching. Yeah, there's the benefits of security and, and all of that, the salary, the benefits, that's nice. But the essence of why I teach is to protect the truth of what I love in, the, in this music. And to, in, in that way, I pay the most homage to the cats who gave it to me. By making sure, like, uh, two members of the Fotep backstage just met George Cables. And I could tell by the look on their face, they didn't know who he was. And so when George left, I said, let me tell you something. You better go research who you just met because you'll learn something about playing your instrument after you figure out who you just met. And th that's my responsibility, right? Because if I don't do it, why? what does it matter if I sit around and complain about how this one can't play and that one can't play and that one can't play? Uh, after a while, it's like, well, Joker, what have you shared? Are you part of the solution or are you just belly aching about the problem? <laughs> This latest CD and your last CD is on your own record label and you decided to you know take your whole career in your own hands and now that the labels have really kind of fallen by the wayside how is it easier for you to put your product out versus having the labels back you up well it's a challenge it's a challenge financially but the reward comes in the autonomy I can decide what I want to put on a record. I can decide how I want to present it. I wrote the liner notes for this project. Uh, and it's not that nobody else can tell my story, but nobody else knows my story better than I do. You know, and um, while I'm grateful for all the labels I signed with from Blue Note through Criss Cross, they all served their purpose at the time. Um, but God bless the child that has his own. And when musicians start taking ownership of their art form in this way, the music will become safer and, and more secure for the future. Um, on a very practical level, I have uh, serious intentions of doing a trumpet record in the next year. 
and nobody else was going to record that. I had to have my own label for that. And it's not just about recording Ralph Peterson product, pro, projects, right? I hope this label will be like a springboard. Um, young Victor Gould, the piano player, is going to sit in from California later on tonight. Um, is going to record with me later in October. And we're going to put his record out. An Indian piano player named Shara Kassan is going to record in the next couple of months with me. And we're going to release his CD primarily in India. You know, So it's about being global. It's about being... Uh, almost guerrilla in your strategy, you know. Um, I'll never be able to compete with the majors. But the majors, major label politics and major label uh, trend following will never be able to tell my story the way I tell my story. It's my story, you know. Otherwise, it'd be his story. <laughs> Jersey, you came up in the funk school, and I'm talking, I'm talking, James Brown, Cool in the Gang, Parliament Funkadelic. Right. I mean, the Meters. And then you got no shame about it. Earth, Wind, and Fire. And, and you know what? And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, when you listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire, you know, Maurice was steeped because he was a session drummer, but he was also a jazz drummer, also with and Maurice White. Maurice White played in the Ramsey Lewis Trio. That's right. You know, and so don't sleep. And I, Blakey, understood that a strong beat was a strong beat. And if it compels you to move unconsciously, it's swinging. And that's the nature, that's the true nature of swing. The true nature of swing is not 4-4 all the time, you know, 2-4 and four in the hi-hat all the time. Swing exists in 7 it, is, it exists in Rumba, it exists in Bimbe, it exists in Abaqua, it exists in Patito Alto, and if you don't know, then you don't know, but to throw rocks at stuff just because it doesn't fit in a little box, you know what I'm saying, is a sign of ignorance, you know. So one of the things we do in the Fotet is deal with grooves outside of the common symmetrical structure, right, that compel you to move, right? And then you say, well, what time signature is in that? And so we play the seven so deep that it feels like four, and when we play the four, we do it in 
three bar phrases and six bar phrases. So the even feels uneven and the uneven feels even. You know, because Michael Carvin is one of your master teachers. And the one thing that you said earlier is that, you know, you have to understand the history to move forward. Mm -hmm. And he made you, he humbled you in a sense. Absolutely. Failed me on my percussion audition as a freshman going into college. Say, you can't study with me. You don't know no rudiments. There's 26 letters of the alphabet and 26 letters of the American English language. You can't study the language of drums till you go learn the alphabet. And that was my first lesson. And what was the lesson? Go learn your rudiments. Take what you do seriously. Take what you do seriously at, or stay away from me. <laughs> right? You keep that trumpet. So I played trumpet for that semester. And every second I wasn't practicing trumpet parts, I was learning rudiments. And now cats know when they come to me, they got to be dealing with that. And that I take it somewhere. I don't just make you learn it because I want you sitting in a practice room for six hours practicing something, you know. That's one of the cues, I think. So, um, yeah, man, he taught me a lot about music, about life. He taught me a lot. <laughs> What does jazz music mean to you? Well, that's an interesting question in today's um, culture. Um, jazz has always been black American music to me. And I think um, jazz means democracy. It means there are it is the living embodiment of, of teamwork and selflessness and giving, service. Jazz means service to the music, not to your ego. Um, playing something just because you can get it off is the absolutely worst reason to play something. Um, jazz is also just a name. You know what I mean? And uh, as black men in America, we've been called many things, but uh, uh, as the comedian D.L. Hughley always says, it's, it's not what you call me that counts, it's what I answer to. So I'd be a jazz musician. Or you call me a jazz drummer. If that's how narrow your vision is, then when you see, my trump see me play trumpet, what are you going to call me then? A musician. And that's all I am. You know, I'm just a musician. You know, I love jazz music. I love funk music. I love hip hop. I love R&B. You know, I love all kinds of music. I love classical music. So, um, you believe too firmly in labels, you become trapped by them. And so, uh, I just try to stay open, you know, and stay humble and keep giving. You know, 
because as long as I've learned that the way the cycle works is you can't hold on to it to keep it. In order to get more, you got to give it, and then it comes back, you know. So I keep giving. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Disney's Club Coca-Cola here, live at Jazz and Lincoln Center here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Ralph Peterson for his time, as well as the staff and management here at Disney's Club Coca-Cola, as well as Jazz at Lincoln Center. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.